Concorde, one of the most beautiful, fastest and safest planes in the world. But in development, it had a rival, the Russian-built Tupolev Tu-144. And at the 1973 Paris Air Show, both aircraft showed up to exert dominance upon the other. Because, um reasons. After a safe running from the Concorde, the crew were mocked by those flying the Tupolev, who claimed they would see something, but that something would come the next day, as the pilots of the Tupolev tried to show off, ripped their plane into millions of pieces, and crashed into a village. And it's with these examples of complete and utter stupidity that bring us onto the running of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, home of round two of the 2022 Formula One season. Hey there guys, I'm Will and welcome to FP1 and the Comedy Review, the show that does its best each week to not get itself cancelled. But boy, that could be difficult this weekend. We'll get into all the controversy in just a little bit. But before we do, if you end up enjoying the video, make sure you click on that big red subscribe button before you leave, as I'll be doing these reviews for the whole season, provided I don't get sick again. I've also been trying to post more on Instagram now, so if you want to see any of the behind the scenes secrets or see what I get up to when I'm not insulting racing drivers, the link to that and all my other socials are found down in the description below. Anyway, let's get this started with the brand new comedy review title sequence. It's the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. We are fucking bunch of wine cups. So let's start with the news, and firstly, Sebastian Vettel's taste of the new 2022 cars will have to wait another two weeks, as he tested positive yet again ahead of the second race in Jeddah. Or maybe this is bullshit, as the only thing slower than Seb's recovery seems to be the Aston Martins themselves. The only other bit of news had to do with Saudi Arabia itself and how no one really wanted to go there in the first place. The country's human rights record is about as good as the circuit itself, and their mass execution welcome party ahead of the Grand Prix solidified their position in being top-class cut. And while teams prepared their new upgrades during first practice, the controversy would only continue, as a missile strike would occur just 10 kilometers from the circuit. Despite the smell of smoke in the air, the session continued on, with Ferrari and Charles Leclerc ending at top of the table. And though the track was finished on time this year, it was still falling apart, with a break marker falling onto the track and enduring a painful death at the hands of Lando Norris. Meanwhile, Bottas's masterstroke decision to move away from Sam Baggers slash backmarkers Mercedes continued as he came home third, while Alpha Tauri also had an impressive hour, Gasly and Sonoda finishing P5 and 6. Moving on to FP2, this would also be the Charles Leclerc show, edging out Max Verstappen and teammate Carlos Sainz. But Mercedes troubles would continue, however, as Mr. Still I Rise struggled to rise up the timesheets. Instead, he only rose up in his cockpit, as Mercedes stole Yuki Tsunoda's booster seat to get Hamilton higher in the car. The ongoing rivalry between the Mercedes driver and Alex Albon also continued on Friday, with a tie almost making it collision number three in second practice. In reality though, both drivers should be safe. I mean, let's be honest, neither are fighting for race wins this season. However, the day's running would be overshadowed by the missile weather forecast, and drivers would congregate after FP2 to discuss boycotting the event entirely. Discussions ran into the early hours of the morning, with the drivers worried about safety, and the F1 bosses worried about how much money they'd lose. But come the end of hours of speculation, the sport opted to continue racing, meaning now the Grand Prix would bomb no matter what happened on Sunday. While Twitter users shouted their unimportant opinions into the void, F1 would race on, with FP3 seeing the Ferrari dominance continue. Tell you what, I can't see anyone challenging for pole at this rate. It was a fairly quiet start to Saturday's proceedings, as Alpha Tauri continued to impress. That was until Gasly's car failed for the second weekend in a row. Hey, at least it didn't blow up this time. The Italian team's reliability woes continued to haunt them into qualifying, with Sonoda's car opting to kill itself, forcing him to start from the back of the grid. Meanwhile, Williams' Nicholas Latifi was looking to improve on his poor quality form from Bahrain, and was looking quick as he binned it into the barrier. That brought out the red flag, as his stricken car was taken away, and when we got going again, it was a pleasure to see the return of Nikita Mazepin to Formula 1. The Russian had sneaked into the venue and hijacked Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes during the break. However, despite this, he still ended up keeping his record going of being knocked out in every Q1 session. While the rest of the paddock looked on in disbelief, I think it's time we spoke about his old team. Yep, it's Haswatch. Fucking 
bunch of wine cough. After Kevin Magnussen's P5 in Bahrain, things were finally looking up for the team heading into Saudi Arabia. However, car troubles for the Danes saw him sit out of the entire session, at the track which he hasn't even driven in the simulator. The Haas mechanics would at least fix it in time for second practice, where Kevin drove out, reported problems, but was told everything was fine and dandy and just to continue anyway. It was no surprise then that half a lap later, footage would cut to the number 20 car trundling to a halt, but could be worse. You could be Mick Schumacher. The German was on the fast lap after getting into Q2 for the second race weekend in a row, before running wide over the curbs at one of the fastest sections of the track. The car would lose control, but Mick would know how to deal with this, as his 360 style move in Bahrain last week showed us. The difference between Bahrain and Jeddah, though, is that Jeddah has walls, so Mick got a little up close and personal with them this time around. Still, not the biggest collision in Jeddah this week. Now, jokes aside, I just want to say that I'm glad Mick is okay and came out of that accident relatively unscathed, and it's proof yet again that the Halo does its job and has saved yet another life in this sport. Anyone that says differently could just f*** off. Anyway, after a lengthy break, we were able to run the rest of Q2, with the two McLarens, Joe and Stroll, joining Schumacher in the drop zone. And during all this time, Ferrari had still looked unbeatable, with Carlos Sainz giving his teammate a run for his money in the shootout for pole. And the Spaniard would end the first Q3 runs fastest, ahead of Leclerc and an impressive showing from Red Bull's Sergio Perez, as a grumpy Max Verstappen slotted down into sixth place. But the momentum was back in the number 16 car by the end of the session, and the stunning lap from the Monagash drive put him on provisional pole with only a few cars left to run. However, while we all focused on that, no one noticed the catastrophic error going down at Red Bull. You see, coming into Q3, they'd accidentally given Perez for Stappen's car, and without the handicap of being the number two driver, Checo went on to shock the F1 world to its core and snatch up pole position. That left everyone with a very big question. How many laps would it be before the team asked him to step aside for Verstappen? Well, Let's find out. Sadly, one person that wouldn't be suffering from team orders would be Yuki Tsunoda, his Alpha Tauri committing seppuku for the third time this weekend. Regardless, as the lights went out, it was a fairly even start from the top two, as Verstappen jumped Sainz and Guan Yu Zhou attempted to mimic one of his teammates' starts as he plummeted to the rear of the field. The first stage of the race was really just a huge advert for BWT, as Alonso and Ocon treated the F1 world to a fantastic overtaking display, making us all wonder at what point would one car pile drive into the other in a horrible accident. But somehow, the cars were navigating Jeddah without much issue, and in the camp of Sergio Perez, all was looking good, with the Mexican extending his lead to the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc. The Scuderia then would have to look at winning the race strategically, which, as we all know, they have a prestigious history of not doing very well. The plan to secure an undercut seemed like a fairly sane one at the time, however. Just a shame, then, that Red Bull would spoil the party by pitting Sergio first, leaving Leclerc to attempt a more ambitious overcut strategy instead. Red Bull, though, had made their second critical mistake for the weekend, with the team forgetting sleeper agent Nicholas Latifi had switched allegiances for 2022. In an apparent attempt to balance the scales from Abu Dhabi, the Canadian lost it in the final sector again, and would bring out the safety car. With Latifi now the first man since Richard Hammond to piss off all of Mexico in one go, it was over to Ferrari, who had the race back in their hands, running first and third as we got going again. At the restart, the Claire held the lead, and was able to hold a comfortable gap to the Red Bull of Verstappen. And at that point, the race at the front anyway looked pretty much done and dusted. But for Guan Yu Zhou, his day was getting worse. His pit crew not able to stand still for five seconds during his pit stop penalty, and earning him a drive through to rub salt in the wounds. At this point, us viewers thought the race was pretty much over. But though the drivers had agreed on Friday night not to boycott the event, turns out their cars had other ideas. In quick succession, Alonso, Ricardo, and Bottas all dropped out near the pits and closed the pit lane entry which was just further pain for Lewis Hamilton, who now couldn't get off the tyres it went on for over 40 laps. And Team LH wouldn't be the only one drowning in pools of their own tears, as once the Grand Prix got going again, Verstappen revealed he'd been playing with the Ferrari of Leclerc all along. Enter a second titanic battle between the rivals in as many races, as they fought over who could have DRS on the main straight. At one point, them even trying one of those last place wins challenges into the final corner. Lance Stroll having the spatial awareness of a truck driver thankfully didn't ruin this one for us, and this time it would be Max Verstappen coming out on top, with his Red Bull managing to go the distance for once and taking the Grand Prix win. Sainz would round out the podium as a very depressed Perez came home fourth. Really do feel for the guy this weekend. But in the grand scheme of things, what an amazing race. 
proving that you don't need red flags or missile strikes to get the entertainment from these new 2022 cars. I do hope, though, that we haven't got to go through a shit show of a weekend like this again, and fingers crossed, F1 can learn from the mistakes made here, like they have had to do for several things recently. Anyway, let me know what you thought of the race down below, and I hope those of you that joined in on the Twitch race watch along enjoyed yourselves as well. Before I go, make sure you're subscribed. A huge thank you to the patrons for supporting what I do over here, and I'll see you all in the next one.